Uh, with this, I start my session for today. Uh, Work-life harmony for women professionals. First of all, burnout. What is this burnout? According to the latest Harvard Business Review report, employee burnout is rising exponentially. WHO World Health Organization has officially included burnout in its 11th revision of international classification of diseases. Burnout is now regarded as a disease. In a recent study, WHO has estimated a loss of 1 trillion due to lost productivity every year because of burnout. So burnout is not an individual concern anymore. It is rather a global issue. It's not that just because of burnout an individual is suffering. The whole economy is suffering because of burnout and it's a very, very, very serious issue at the moment. What is the consequences of job burnout? It leads to excessive stress, fatigue, insomnia, sleep disorders, vulnerability to diseases like lifestyle disorder diseases like heart disease, blood pressure, diabetes. We have got innumerable example recently, singer KK, he died just after his show in Kolkata. It is one of example of like, you know, uh, the lifestyle disorder that how can somebody just die like that? It uh, leads to addictions, alcohol, substance misuse, and the, the greatest addiction at the moment is addiction to electronics. Then it, leads to emotional disturbance, sadness, anger, irritability. It leads to absenteeism in workplace, loss in productivity, disturbed relationship. And in extreme cases, it goes to mental breakdown and can often lead to suicide. Example of uh, owner of Cafe Coffee Day, BG Siddharth, is uh, one of uh, like, you know, the live example where how uh, burnout, stress, could lead to like you know loss of mental balance and uh, suicide and then innumerable other cases we won't go into all the detail, details of this because our purpose of today is how to get over it how to get over burnout because burnout is uh, at every stage like you know it is uh, it is hovering above us and we need to have the right techniques the right ways in place to ensure that we overcome this burnout and manage our work life harmony now burnout in women like some very alarming statistics recent data looking specifically at burnout in women is concerning according to a survey by linkedin of almost 5000 americans 74 percent women were suffering from burnout compared to just 61 percent of the male counterpart another survey done by great place to work and uh, healthcare care uh, maven found that mothers in paid employment are 23 percent more likely to experience burnout than fathers in paid employment an estimated 2.35 million working mothers in us suffered from burnout due to from the start of pandemic and uh, in september last year just as the pandemic was gaining pace more than eight 8.6 lakhs women dropped out of their work compared to just 2 lakh men. One estimate put the numbers of mothers who quit US workforce between February and September last year is almost 9 lakh compared to number of fathers which was at 3 lakhs. So burnout is by itself a very serious issue and it touches both men and women. But when it comes to women, then burnout is really 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 serious and it is either leading to loss of productivity loss of health and at times women are also quitting their job totally because they are not able to handle the pressures so now let's come to why why this is this is a serious issue in women because in earlier times men were hunters and women were nurturers by hunters we mean that they used to go out 
and bring food home and women used to cook food at home and take care of their family so the society was very nicely divided and demarcated into these two different roles of hunters and nurturers and uh, this was working very fine for them because that time the role of men was more physical which suited them and women was more taking care of their children and their family and all those stuff but now the times have changed and the roles have evolved with this in the change time also when the roles have evolved and now uh, physicality the physical strength is not the only criteria to move out of home and work like you know pq iq eq sq everything is important and a holistic personality actually can take care of everything so now uh, work moving outside of the house is not a not only a prerogative of men men and women are equally shouldering those responsibilities but even in that case there are certain roles which are unique to women child bearing like getting pregnant and child rearing like in taking care of an infant breastfeeding and all those stuff is unique to women and in no circumstances can be shared with men we are sharing lot of responsibilities that men were doing earlier but men under no circumstances can take care of this responsibility of child bearing and rearing so the real challenge that the women of today is facing is that along with this unique role she is all set to create an identity for her, for herself men are still working in their domain of expertise that is moving out of the house and working but women are all set to expand their domain and widen their horizons so women is not working one time she is working two time she is not working 9 to 6 she is working round the clock and that is posing the greatest challenge in front of her and that is work life harmony and as i began it's it's much beyond work life balance work life balance means just striking a balance between the two but we have to achieve a scenario where our work supports our family life and our family life supports our work when the two when the two two sides of this coin start supporting each other then we can actually claim ourselves to be real achievers so what we need to achieve is not just work life balance we need to achieve work life harmony and it's actually very easy for us it's actually very very easy for us for women achieving this work life harmony is very very easy why because we have been created like that who has created us god himself we are all creators of god so do you think god can ever make a mistake can he ever make a mistake when he gave this added responsibility of to women of child bearing or child rearing and also in case of marriage after marriage it is the woman who gets uprooted from her original home her original position and she moves to a new strange environment which she is not used to and she gets settled and uh, she again gets rooted and then she bears a child she gives birth and she takes care of an infant so uh, so this role is not that easy it is very tough and and not to men so there must be something special that he has done to us we are his special creation it is not just by chance that okay we we can get pregnant and we can breastfeed and and after marriage we shift to our husband's house we change our surname we change our identity we change our interests we and we adapt so much how is it possible to adapt because god has made us like that men are left brain oriented dealing with logic and reasoning while women are right brain oriented dealing with intuition and creativity 
women have more connections going from the left to the right across the two halves of the brain giving them an advantage of piling together information from different sources and drawing conclusions and also multiplexing multiplexing is an amazing quality that women has got men are not that great at multiplexing whatever they have learned they have learned but women are born with it at one point of time she is capable of handling 10 different things she can keep an eye on her infant she can talk on the phone she can cook she can instruct somebody she can open the door when the doorbell rings she can handle 10 different activities at the same time and she can shift between one acti activity to the other without any grudges or without any even thought of it that okay i'm shifting because she's so used to it she can handle beautifully she can handle it beautifully why because her left and the right brain are like you know integrated and it gives her the power to multiplex do multiple things at the same time again women have large amount of gray matter in their hippocampus uh, and left coded which controls their memory and communication skills in female brains there are more wiring in regions linked to memory and communication that's the reason women have got have they have much better memory than men a woman can remember almost everything ask a man about his birthday or anniversary or whatever they will always fail but woman always remembers not only hers but her entire family and her friends and relatives and everybody she has got a picture perfect memory she does so she does not forget what happens then 10 years before and uh, and the men can just forget what happened 10 hours before because um the 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 memory of a woman is much more powerful she she is more emotional and anything that is related to emotion she that store that gets stored in her brain and stays forever and she has got amazing communication skills so that makes women uh, it gives her a better platform and uh, she is much better at at handling these kind of things when than men so when it comes to playing two roles a woman can do it so i want to break that myth from our mind that you know we are working two times and men are just working one time and we are not as better off as them no we are made like that god has made us like that so we are totally totally capable of handling our home and handling our work equally equally well it's just that we need to prioritize and strategize things properly we need to understand our different stages because a woman in her life she undergoes various stages like you know an earlier earlier age she's studying and she's focused on her studies and everything and that time also she excels because i was just going through all the data like you know the the women toppers and the percentage of women pass outs is literally increasing every year so that is a great uh, that is a great signal which which is saying that like you know that women are so good and they are so focused and they are so confident in fact tomorrow i've been invited by the eastern india icai just to speak on this topic on how to get the get the women uh, workforce back because they are feeling that like you know women are are cream asset like you no know, they are they are they are they're amazing they are so intelligent but because of this uh, work life imbalance saying they're not able to handle it majority of their cream talent is moving out and they want to get them back so we are having a session tomorrow on creating the life of your dreams how you can like you know uh, motivating them to like you know get back so a woman's life undergoes through like you know various cycle where she gets married she gives birth she gets pregnant she gives birth and then the kids grow older and all those stuff so a woman life will not remain the same forever we need to understand that really really well and if we understand that well then our problem with work life balance goes away forever when we are married and when we are pregnant and our kids are small then naturally in that work life balancing stuff the family will take the priority but once the kids are settled like you know they are at the age of 3 4 5 when they start going to montessori and school then you again start getting time and you can again like you know start focusing on your work 
you can maybe you don't start full time you start part time and as your kids grow older and your responsibility towards them decreases their school hours increases you can just get into that full time so you need to just like you know uh, juggle between it between it you need to just understand that you know what are your prioritization priorities at that particular moment of time and you have to you have to shift your requirements accordingly many times we feel that women are not doing that and that creates to all sorts of problem like you know once your kids are settled you need to get back because you work so hard in achieving this degree and now if we're not doing justice to it then what will happen there will be a burnout inside you will be like you know what to say you will you will be you will be killing yourself every second every moment and that will be detrimental for you as well as your family physically you might be giving time to your family but emotionally you are shattered you're not happy you've got that isolation inside you've got that vacuum inside you which is saying that you're not worthy enough and then if you feel you're not worthy enough will you be able to give back to family no not at all you won't be able to give back to family if somebody has 100 rupees in their pocket then they only can think that okay i can part away with 50 rupees if you just have 10 rupees can you think of giving 50 rupees no not possible so if a woman is happy then she can spread happiness and if she is not happy if she is feeling lost if she is feeling vacuum inside if she is feeling some sort of burnout inside what what will happen her family will also suffer the same physically she might be present for her kids for her husband for in laws but emotionally she is not and that is uh, sabotaging and same the other way round when she is pregnant when her kid is very small and your child really needs you that time if you don't take care of them then what will happen they won't have good health they won't have good mental uh, like you know growth their physical growth so what will what will happen that will create lot of problems in later in life you have to queue up to the doctor like i i take i am a garbh sanskar coach as well so the moment women start getting pregnant i tell them that it is a workload don't pressurize and if you can't handle then quit it's fine it's absolutely perfect it's okay because the amount of time that time when that you give to yourself and to your child is going to get returned multiple times but yes once you are settled with your household responsibilities get back so a woman needs to be very intelligent to do this kind of movement where and how much that is the crux of everything because even i did the same i was at the peak of my career when i got pregnant with my son but then i had to leave part of it yes i had to forego and then my daughter was born after 2 years then i had to forego more and this continued for like three more years and when my daughter turned 3 4 and my son was absolutely settled i got back in my work with a bang and uh, i don't think i lost on anything because the period when i was not working i was just raising my talents i was improving myself so that's another message i like to give to the women workforce that in case because of family responsibilities you're not able to contribute don't leave work altogether at least keep raising your talents be in touch with with uh, your work in terms of reading in terms of knowing whatever so that whenever the right opportunity arises you can get back without any hesitation so here in this slide i want to discuss about a harmonious balanced life approach so the it uh, there are six different areas in a life of women which needs to be balanced really really well percentage of balance might change with respect to uh, your uh, like you know position in life like family and relationship might need lot of time when you are pregnant and your child is very small but later on this can reduce and your work and finance can become more important health and fitness is again very important for women because the woman's body undergoes lot of changes when she gets pregnant she is breastfeeding and then like you know later on life she undergoes menopause and all those stuff so health is something which a woman needs to really take care and she needs to ensure that she uh, mandatorily gives some time to take care of her health 
social and community building that is again a very important part of women because the relationship of the house is actually being managed by a woman only passion fun and recreation this is the most neglected segment of a working woman because she's juggling between family and her work so in this juggle she's either giving time to work or giving time to family but nowhere there is a me time coming up and if there is no me time then that can be very sabotaging so you need to ensure that on a weekly basis you can at least take some time off and do things which you love to do because that little time also energizes you further and helps you to take care of that work life balance and then finally personal and spiritual growth as i told you this can never stop even when you are on a sabbatical you have like you know uh, left work for some time you need to continue this thing of personal growth because i am a live example of that i left work for few years but somehow i kept adding on to my like you know knowledge to uh, to my uh, like you know interest areas and i didn't even realize that what kind of benefits that is going that it is going to give me and really i i feel that even if not left to work and continued working but not gained on this knowledge i would not have been to this level which i am currently at so whatever i invested on myself in terms of my personal spiritual growth really returned back to me exponential so these are the six areas of a life of men which needs to be balanced properly it's not just work and family in order that work and family happens properly health needs to be taken care fun and recreation needs to be taken care of properly personal growth needs to be taken care of properly and then social and community building should also happen because ultimately it is your social and your community that helps you in giving you that energy in giving you that push so these are six major areas of women life and importance and priority keeps changing as per life's situation and understand the changing priorities and focus on these changes accordingly is the crux of work life harmony that is the crux if a woman can get this and understand which point of time in her life in which situation she should focus on what more then she is able to handle things really well because a woman's life is difficult especially for a working woman it is difficult it's not that easy but it can be really easy if she balances it really really well so now we'll come up with different ways of achieving this work life harmony so we will discuss about increasing our physical quotient increasing our intellectual quotient increasing our emotional quotient and increasing our spiritual quotient pq iq eq and sq where we focus on all the four four areas then holistically we will be able to handle work life harmony then work life like you know your family and your work are the not two sides of the coin then they are supporters of each other they work in tandem the family supports work and work supports family both are taking care of each other and that is the stage that we need to achieve so first of all we need to talk about our physical quotient so we need to really take care of our body because if our body is not proper then everything falls apart then there is uh, there is nothing like you know we can't focus on work and we can't take care of a family if we really want to ensure that we can uh, perform really good at a workplace and at the same time be very loving and caring in our family then we need to increase our physical quotient we can't neglect on our health so the first aspect is positive energy nutritious balanced diet whatever we consume should be should have positive energy so what do you mean by positive energy anything that is close to nature has got positive energy clean and simple so all the greens like you know the vegetables the fruits the nuts 
the dairy products they are all having positive energy and they need to be nutritious they need to be balanced so we need to ensure that whatever we are eating should be proper because if we are not eating the right kind of things then we are leading to health issues the majority 80 percent plus health problems in today's life are lifestyle disorders rising out of wrong food habits wrong sleeping cycle and all those stuff actually this particular slide i can take a two-hour session on that but uh, <clears throat> i'm very interested in fact all the slides that are going to come now on i can take an hour long session on each of those slides and if opportunity comes to me again <clears throat> i will love to take that but <clears throat> right now i'm going to just touch upon it so that you get an understanding on um, all these concepts i might not be able to go deep into it because of the time constraint but yes i'll i'll cover all the aspects so that you understand that if we want to achieve work life harmony then these are the areas we need to take care so our diet needs to be <clears throat> positive it needs to be healthy and the timing of the diet is also very important <clears throat> because if we are not eating food at the right time then what happens digestion does not take place properly if we eat very late and we go off to sleep then what will happen we are not able to digest our food the food remains undigested in our system and this undigested food starts rotting and it turns into ulcers it turn, turns into stones and like you know it, it creates whole lot of problems so not only the type of food what we are eating but also when we are eating is very important so it is advisable that we should eat at least two to three hours before we go off to sleep and and then uh, there is a huge lot of like you know discussions going on about intermittent fasting right now that we should at least fast for 14 to 16 hours like you know the last meal of the day and the first meal of the next day should have a gap of 14 to 16 hours because in this gap we can ensure that all our food gets digested and when all the food gets digested properly then all these problem of uh, ulcer and uh, stone and blockages does not happen now energized water our body is made up of 70 percent water so it is very important that we should hydrate our body really well we should minimum drink like you know eight to ten glasses of water every day and uh, dr emoto from japan he had done a beautiful experiment on water where he found that the water has got crystalline structures and uh, when we say and water has got memory so when we say good words to water before drinking it then it, it creates beautiful crystalline structures and if we like you know uh, say something bad then uh, the structure that is formed is um, is very uh, what to say uh, is 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 not proper it's um, uh, it's um, very uh, uh, not not good to look at and uh, it is very haphazard and chaotic so when we are drinking water the moment we take the glass in our hand and, and if we just say some good words to water saying that like you know you are going to hydrate my body and uh, you are you are so important to me and uh, my body does wonders when it gets you if you say some like you know, some appreciative word of you can just chant a mantra before drinking water it does wonders to you so uh, your diet has to be good water you should drink it appropriately like a minimum eight to ten glasses and while drinking if you can chant some good words or say some good words to water it, it is wonderful then sleep is very very important not just the number of hours of sleep along with that when you are sleeping that also plays a very important role because if we are not slept well then our mind is very disturbed and uh, all the toxins is released from our body while we are sleeping so and it has been found that uh, from 9 pm to 3 am in the morning is the time where the maximum flush out of toxins happen uh, 
And if we are not sleeping during this time, like 9 p.m. to 3 a.m., like there are people who have a habit of sleeping really late, like by 12 uh, midnight or maybe 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock. Even people who sleep by 2.30, 3 a.m. Uh, because they're so hard pressed with their work and everything, then they're actually doing the wrong thing because they are not taking care, uh, not uh, taking advantage of those healing powers in their body. And when they're not taking advantage of those healing power, then what is happening? The, the release of toxin is not happening and the uh, maintenance of the body is not happening like you know the the growth and everything happens in sleep even that is not happening so it is very important that we should sleep as close as 9 p.m like you know maybe 10 10 30 maximum 11 we should not delay beyond that because if we delay beyond that then we get lesser and lesser time our body gets lesser and lesser time for its healing purposes any sleep after 3 a 3 a.m is just for the body but there's nothing good that is happening that time so that's why you'll realize that when you sleep really late even if you sleep like good 10 hours still when you wake up you wake up with a heavy head and you don't feel good about it the reason being the toxins are not released and that's the whole thing so it is very important that our sleep should be good quality sleep and uh, the timing of the sleep is also very important so we uh, like we need to ensure that like you know we need to we should wind up things quite fast and plus we should eat like anything at least two to three hours before sleeping because if we sleep if we eat just before sleeping then what will happen all the energies get diverted into digestion towards digestion and then what will happen the again like you know the the growth work and the uh, the release of toxin and all those stuff will not happen properly so that is like very sabotaging for our body so it is very important that we should eat early much earlier than we sleep and we should sleep also early like you know early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy wealthy and wise we have been hearing about it since we were very small but every word of it is actually true it is very important that we should sleep early and if we sleep early we'll wake up early and uh, uh, when we wake up early it's brahma mura the divine energies are at its peak and that time we whatever work we do we get results multiple times multiple times so i'll suggest those people who are like hard pressed with work and uh, they are like finishing work till 3 a.m and working just swap their schedule sleep early and get up at 3 a.m that way you will get you will get double advantage you'll get the advantage of sleep as well and you will get advantage of brahma murat as well so just change this pattern it might uh like be difficult towards the beginning but if you try you'll be able to achieve this cycle it's just a uh, mental uh, like you know change and it will do wonders to you and then exercise exercise is very 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 important because 10 percent of the toxins get released through urine 20 percent through excretion and 70 percent of the toxin of the body gets released through sweat so if we don't sweat then all the toxins are trapped in our body itself and when we exercise we release a lot of positive hormones like dopamine oxytocin and all these stuff and uh, they do wonders to our brain to our mind to our body and uh, gives us a lot of healing and finally say no to addictions any form of addiction any form of addiction and it includes addiction towards electronics which is a major addiction in today's period really affects your brain like you know what does addiction do addiction captures our brain and it numbs its thinking processes so any form of addiction be it tea be it coffee uh, be it alcohol be it any kind of drugs or be it electronics it is sabotaging to you so if you want a, a very high peak you a very good physical quotient then you need to get over these kind of addiction especially addiction towards electronics you need to have some time where you just like you know go off electronic that okay from this period to this period like you know just before you sleep just before you sleep you like you know one hour before you sleep just get over your electronics like don't touch electronics anymore because the waves that come out of these electronic gadgets they are very harmful to your body and they disturb your sleep that's why majority of the people today now suffering from insomnia people need sleeping pills to sleep it's actually funny like you know sleep is something which is most natural to a human being but today we need sleeping pills 
to ensure that we sleep properly that is something uh, which is totally against nature and the whole credit for this goes to electronic gadgets because these waves are so powerful that they disturb our brain and they disturb our sleep so one hour before you go to sleep just get off these electronic gadgets now increasing your intellectual quotient so here we are going to come up with strategies for achieving work life harmony and the most important strategy is time management so here i won't be able to because time management by itself is a big topic as i as i discuss in pq also it's a big topic so here i'm just going to like you know touch uh, some basics of it so that you get an understanding and in future if time permits we can always deliberate further on it so this i i'll i really want that if all of you can just take a screenshot of this uh, and remember this grid whenever you get stuck with your like you know priorities see uh, here you are on the top you have got urgent and non urgent and here uh, on the vertical line you have got your important and not important first thing you need to remember that not all urgent things are important you need to have very good clarity between things that are urgent and things that are important what are urgent things things that are not handled in time which has been being postponed over a long period of time has become urgent plain and simple so in the first grid it is important as well as urgent what are these things crisis deadlines last minute preparations and task which has been postponed from two so urgent as well as important so when we talk about things that are urgent as well as important what should we do we have no choice we have to do it so just do it don't postpone it further because the more you postpone the more problems it will create so anything that is urgent for you as well as important for you just do it now we come to the second block not urgent but important this is the place where you should spend 70 to 80% of your time so whatever activities you need to do throughout the day divide it into this grid and ensure that 70 to 80% activities lie in this if you take care of 70 to 80% of activities in this grid then you are absolutely sorted you are absolutely sorted because all the growth happens in this grid this is a productivity grid all strategic planning relationship building working towards goal it all happens here but problem with us is that we don't focus on it because we love that crisis we love that stress feeling we love that anxiety it gives us that kick and then we feel that yes we are working if we don't if we don't undergo that stress we feel oh kuch to kar hi nahi rahe we are not doing anything the moment that stress comes that gives us that kick that oh we should do but you are not understanding what it is creating uh, in your physical emotional mental like you know it is a disturbing your system we need to ensure that nothing from this grid should move on to the first grid <clears throat> and that will happen if you focus maximum on this grid so plan focus on your planning and don't procrastinate don't procrastinate now let us come to the third grid which is not important but urgent what should we do about it not important is not important for you but it is urgent what are these these are interruptions calls messages social media these are not important but these are urgent you need to respond to it what should you do delegate <clears throat> you should delegate delegate all the activities to someone or to some software whatever now is the world of ai so just delegate these activities which are constant distractors for you and which is hampering your productivity in your second grid and finally we move on to the fourth grid which are total waste trivial activities time wasters gossip blah 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 not urgent not important what should we do about it learn to say no learn to say no anybody who comes tries to suck your time suck your energy talking all crap tell that person that sorry my time is very important and i don't get involved in these things so just 
learn to say no for things which are not urgent and not important so in order to achieve this you should do an abc analysis of all your work a very important b is of medium level and c is not important at all c just chuck it off either delegate or say no if it is if it is important then delegate if it is not important then just chuck it off not required b start focusing and a your maximum time should go on a so if you can take care of your grid properly then that will really help you in achieving proper work life harmony now <clears throat> we'll come to our third question that is emotional quotient how should we increase our emotional quotient what do you mean by emotional quotient emotional quotient is our emotions and for a woman emotional quotient is very important if you've got a very supportive husband supportive in laws if you've got proper staff at your home then a lot of things get taken care of similarly in your office if your subordinates are very good if your boss is very cooperative if your colleagues are very helpful then again things are taken care of so relationship is the key it is the key but how should we ensure that everybody is supportive to us how should we ensure life is like a mirror reflecting what you do you give it a smile and a smile to you so plain and simple if you are supportive they are supportive if you are not they are not as simple as that because relationship follows the laws of nature what are the different laws of nature <clears throat> you take a seed <clears throat> any seed and you think that <laughs> the fruits will come without sowing the seed is that possible not possible you have to sow you have to sow the seed first so that means you have to give first in any relationship you need to contribute first and then you can expect the other person to start contributing to it then if you take a seed of mango what will come mango you won't get papaya out of a mango seed so if you give love you get love if you give anger you get anger if you give cooperation you get cooperation if you give distrust you get distrust so you reap what you sow now if you just put one seed of mango do you get one mango only no you get multiple mangoes hundreds of mangoes and that too for many many years similarly you do one act of cooperation selflessly you are overwhelmed by the cooperation from everyone around you then constant nurturing you just sow the seed and you forget about it not at all you need to give it nutrition into give proper soil into water it regularly ensure that it is safeguarded from the sunlight it gets the adequate amount of sunlight and everything so you need to nurture it similarly you just do one good deed and you forget no you need to nurture your relationship and finally a tree takes 100 like you know many many years to grow like you know it takes 5 to 10 years minimum to become strong to to become big but if you want to chuck it off like you want to uh blow it off what we need to do we just take one spade and it is gone in one blow it is gone similarly in relationship it takes years to nurture but it gets over really really fast so if you want to increase your eq you need to ensure that you put in into it like you know you you follow these laws of nature and you invest in your relationship because this investment has got exponential returns and your work life harmony really really balanced like you know uh, rests upon it if you have got a very cooperative environment at your home at your work your life becomes super duper easy and that cooperation can't happen overnight that cooperation will only happen with your efforts and again how to increase your emotional quotient whatever be the situation just be happy the more happy you are you are able to secrete dopamine oxytocin serotonin endorphin all these hormones and these hormones do wonders to you so whatever be the situation whatever be the situation 
on the surface level you might need to like you know scold us about it it's cold it's important to scold at times but deep inside you should be absolutely in a state of bliss the scolding should happen only with the mouth not from each and every like you know cell many times i see people who are like you know uh, who get their entire body their whole cellular system involved doing things which is wrong you involve your cellular system for your constructive activities but <clears throat> when it comes to negative emotion do it at the surface don't disturb your internal peace your internal happiness the more happy you are higher will be your emotional quotient and then finally we come to spiritual quotient <clears throat> our brain activates like you know at different waves alpha beta gamma theta at different different ways when we are doing our regular activities we are actually in the beta mode beta mode is the worldly mode uh in at which we are executing our activities like right now i am at beta mode because i am like conversing with you i am telling you things and all those stuff but if we want to achieve something then we have to move on to the alpha mode alpha mode is the meditative mode it is the mode where all the creation happens the deja vu happens when you move on to the alpha mode like you know all the ideas the secretion of ideas the flow of ideas the innovation it all happens in alpha mode we talk about law of attraction it happens in alpha mode we start attracting the right people we start attracting the right situations the right opportunities that is when we go into the alpha mode we start materializing things little effort like you know the moment we start we get into the practice of moving more and more into alpha mode our life will become blissful because we'll be we'll start to work smart now we don't need to put in lot of efforts to achieve lot of result with little effort we can achieve lot of results so work hard get replaces with work smart because the whole nature the brahmand the universe is supporting you so it is very important that you should get into the practice of moving into alpha mode and how you move into alpha mode by doing pranayam by doing meditation by doing mantra chanting all these activities like you know lessens the clutter of your brain the thought every day we like you know 60 more than 60000 thoughts a day our mind like you know, it, it, it goes to maybe 1 1.5 lakh for people who are like stressed and disturbed so and the more thoughts we generate in our mind the more like you know we are uh, losing ourselves so we need to slow down the thoughts but the quality of thoughts should become better the number in increase decrease and the quality should become better and that can happen when we do pranayam meditation mantra chanting all these like you know uh, divine activity do then we are able to move into alpha mode and this helps in creative idea generation it helps in resource attraction like you know attracting right kind of people right kind of situation opportunities it helps in materialization it actually helps us to work smart in less we are able to achieve more and that is what we want to do because we want to handle our work we want to handle our family we want to think so how we can do that when by putting in little effort if we get more results then that's the key so you need to increase your special, uh, spiritual quotient actually the time is very less uh, otherwise i would have taken you through a meditative session maybe helped you with some mantras like you know gone into more detail pranayam like as i told you each slide of mine needs one one hour of deliberation so which maybe in future if time permits i'll i'll love to do that so like you know uh, these things are required that will help you to achieve that work life harmony so how to make your dincharya blissful how to plan your day that it is like really effective for you so morning time is for your dev karma like you know all these activities like uh, as i told you mantra chanting pranayama meditation exercising yoga all these activities that charges your battery should be done in early in the morning what you do with your mobile with your laptops with your tablets you charge them every morning right why you charge them so that they are full with charge so are you charging yourself ask yourself every second we are depleting our energy like every second the battery life of my mobile is going away my laptop is going away 
so what i'm doing i'm i'm carrying a power bank with me i'm carrying the charger with me and plugging it in wherever it is required but are we doing that where is our power bank where is our battery we need to energize ourselves every day every morning like we do to our electronic gadgets and that can be done through yoga through pranayam through meditation through mantra chanting through all these activities through some seva activities we can achieve that charging of our cells and the entire day should be spent in you know, sansaric activity related to your work your material growth your family commitments responsibilities blah 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 then that time we are not talking about any mantra chanting or whatever that time you are focused and if your energy is very high if morning you have utilized really really well and you've energized yourself really well then you will work smart here you don't need to put in a lot of hard work with small effort you will get amazing results you will meet the right people people will just come to you and will be shocked oh my god i wanted to meet something like him so that he could help me and the person is sitting right in front of you so the nature will help you the nature will help you so the day should go into sansari kam and finally in the night what we do in the night we generally go out to party or to dine or maybe we come back home we put on the tv we don't know who are around us we are watching some like you know serial or whatever netflix blah 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 or we are updating a facebook insta blah 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 night time should be shanti karm with your family because your family is your soul group your family you have like you know if we talk about the theory of karma as your family is really really important for you and if you give love to your family and the family gives love back then that is the greatest energy booster for you so night should be fun with family have fun with your family put up a song dance have fun talk enjoy take updates about each other's day help them with their things so night should be shanti karm with your family if you create this kind of yes We, we we need to party. We need to hang out with the friends. We need to go out. Restrict it to one or two days a week, but rest at least five days a week. Do these things. Take a couple of days off for doing like you know hevar for going hevar, but at least the net the rest of the five days should like you know set you back. So if you create a dincharya like this, then that will be really really amazing, and that will really take care of your work life harmony. So now. i come to the last slide because for me each and every woman seated here uh, is maa durga bai herself ya devi sarvabhuteshu shakti rupena sansthita namastasse 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 namo nama to all the shakti sitting here i bow down to all of you because all of you including me we are doing A great job. We are doing a great job. We are taking care of our children. We are taking care of family. We are taking care of work. We are taking care of aspirations. We are taking care of everything. It's just that we have to now take it blissfully and happily. We have to take that commitment to ourselves. And does not it does not matter. Kabi koi chiz thoda jada ho gaya, thoda kam ho gaya. It's okay. Learn to let go. Learn to let go. Life is too big. Two years kam kam kar li kuch nahi hoga. It's okay. it's okay what is important is being happy having a sense of achievement is most important so have that sense of achievement whatever you are doing is super duper you are doing great and you are one of the most elite women in the country so hats off to all of you have great pride in yourself because you have it in you just activate your dormant powers you got all the powers you are really really amazing you just need to activate them you just need to sort them out you just to like you know organize things properly that's it so with this i come to an end to my session it